So, uh, greeting, ladies and gentlemen. This is Main Siu Mei from uh, Cambodian News, and this is day two of the Gyms of Siem Reap talk show uh, the Cambodian uh, has been doing. And today we are having Mr. Uh, Nicholas Hart, the uh, expert of uh, tourism development and also the founder of IDG, the Global Tourism uh, Network. And today we are going to talk about the reasons that the Siem Reap province should be added to the bucket list of uh, tourist uh, destinations. So, uh, good morning, Mr. Uh, Nicholas. Very so, good morning. as uh, you have seen uh, the progress of tourism sector in Simbria province, as uh, you have been staying here over two years now. So, uh, the, in, since 2023, uh, the government has been uh, uh, doing a lot of activities and pushing the events, tourism activities in the province in order to uh, boost the tourism sector here to recover from the loss. Uh, from the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. But uh, from your perspective as an expert in tourism sector, uh, what is your assessment on the progress in the province so far? Sir? Mm -hmm. Well, the tourism has greatly progressed since the country reopened in 2022. Um, in fact, Cambodia was among the countries that reopened first for tourists again after the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the numbers have increased since the country reopened. Currently, as of yesterday, when I was checking the numbers, 627,000 uh, Angkor passes were sold until yesterday for 2024. And in fact, this is more than was sold last year at the same time. So tourist numbers are increasing since Cambodia has reopened in 2022. Um, there was a lot of postponed travel that actually came back, tourists that waited to come to Cambodia and were not able to do so, which we saw in the study that uh, we did together with GIZ, the German Development Agency, showing that a lot of people had waited for the country to reopen. Um, last year when we did our second study, we actually found out that um, tourist numbers were a bit slower than the year before. Why? Because those who had waited to travel to Cambodia after COVID um, had done so in 2022. So this was more of a wave of people that needed to wait to travel. And then 2023, last year, saw a bit of lesser numbers at the same period. However, this year, um, also with all the activities that the government is doing, numbers are increasing steadily. Um, just in March, for example, we had the 8th Siem Reap River Festival, right, attracting a lot of uh, people to Siem Reap. April saw the Khmer New Year, so there's a lot happening, attracting the tourists. At the same time, there's still the need of making people aware of what's happening in Cambodia, right, to make them excited and make them come to the country. But so, uh, based on this data, you <coughs> said that the number of tourists is increasing, but uh, there's still a little bit of a slow pace of the increase as well. But so, do you think that uh, the events that uh, have been held so far are enough to uh, attract more tourists, or do, what kind of uh, more activity that you think that will attract more not only national or domestic tourists, but the international uh, visitors as well? It is certainly not only the events that will help tourists come to Cambodia. It's also the knowledge about Cambodia as tourism destination. If we look at the neighboring countries like Thailand and Vietnam, both have been very well known for many years as attractive tourist destination for different areas, beach, culture, etc. Um, and, and that reputation has certainly helped those countries to recover faster, right? As tourists knew those countries as destination already. Accessibility is another very important factor, right? How do tourists who want to come to Cambodia actually come here, right? How about flight connections? How about uh, connections through land borders? Um, so all these are additional effects that certainly will need to be addressed in addition to the event. The event can be an important pull factor at the destination. At the same time, I would need to know about the destination in general. And if I know about the destination in general, I will also need to know how can I get there. Right? So there are several factors actually coming together that would need to be addressed. So the event itself is certainly not the only solution to it, but would need to, consider, to be considered in a larger context. 
But uh, uh, we have discussed earlier that accessibility, availability are only one thing, but another problem is that the affordability. Mm -hmm. So how how you think about this, sir? Affordability is, is certainly very important and again several factors coming in here, right? Uh, Cambodia using the US dollar, um, yes. then having uh, high airport taxes and charges um, for airlines, right? Then having uh, maybe a transportation offer that is not very much known to tourists that want to come by the land border. Immigration and visa is another factor that is maybe um, scaring off some tourists, I must say, to cross the land borders. And then if I don't know exactly what is the transportation like, how do I enter the country on the land border? There are two factors that are making me hesitant as a tourist and say, okay, then I would need to fly. But then how about the flight prices, right? So what airlines are flying there? Is it a reliable service? Um, and then from the airport to the city with the new airport at uh, Siem Reap with SAI, how do I get to the city? What is the additional cost, right? So it's, it's a lot of things adding up again. <laughs> so it, it's uh, about the matter of convenience in terms of accommodation, uh, uh, transportation is as well. <coughs> so uh, the next question is, uh, as you know that Siem Reap uh, is mostly known uh, for rich, its richness in uh, culture and history, and especially the temples. So the temples have been the main uh, attraction of tourists. But uh, from your perspective, is there any other potential tourism uh, factor that beyond the temple that can attract, uh, especially the tour uh, international uh, visitors that can, they come here, they cannot just only see the temples, but they can also do other things that uh, is considered as the uniqueness of the Simbi province. Definitely, I love the question because the definite answer is yes, there is. There is so much to do here in Siem Reap province in Cambodia as a whole. And uh, the GIZ study, Cambodia's Tourism Insights 2022, actually looked explicitly into what else is there besides the temples. Um, and we found out that there are six main areas with a lot of potential for tourism development, being culture, history, gastronomy, nature, outdoors and adventure, islands and beaches and wellness. So those six areas actually give tourism providers in Cambodia and in Siem Reap province uh, good starting points to develop additional products and to offer tours, activities to make tourists stay longer and visit other things besides the temples. What we did in last year's study, 2023, was actually to rank those areas and ask tourists out of those six areas what is the most relevant area for you when you visit Cambodia and in fact culture by very far is the main area of interest for tourists coming to Cambodia followed by history both ancient and recent history um, then nature outdoors and adventure and gastronomy so those are really the four main areas out of the six I mentioned initially where we have a lot of potential here in Siem Reap province and Cambodia to actually um, make tourists stay longer discover activities in those areas and finally visit other things besides the temples when it comes to islands and beaches this is also something where Cambodia as a tourist destination as a whole can capitalize on. Why? Because a lot of tourists come to Cambodia for the temples and then go to Thailand or Vietnam to stay at the beaches for one week or ten days, right? So why don't we try to get more of that share of tourists to stay in Cambodia, visit the temples and do the beach part also in Cambodia? For this, however, tourists need to know there are beaches in Cambodia, there are islands in Cambodia. We have had tourists thinking that Cambodia was a landlocked country, right? So again, this is a matter of information. This is a matter of destination promotion in a way like, hey, there's not only the temples, there are amazing beaches, which look like the Maldives maybe, yeah? But if people don't know, how do you want them to stay? Um, wellness is something we have uh, rather seen as something less relevant as a standalone, certainly in a combination with other uh, attractions. And then there was very interestingly one area that we also explored last year, which is sports tourism, sports right? Tourism. I know that with the Southeast Asian Games and the Para Games, um, the government was looking at positioning Cambodia as a sports destination. Um, and we took that uh, opportunity 
to check in our survey on how tourists feel about sports in Cambodia. And in fact, 91% of tourists said that they do not see Cambodia as a sports tourism destination if sports tourism was developed as a standalone. So here's the thing. Tourists mostly consider Cambodia as a destination for culture and history, right? If we want to include sports into it, we can do so by linking it to culture or history, right? And then I believe it can be powerful looking at aspects like Kun Khmer, looking at uh, Khmer, Khmer archery, yeah? Things that even in the reliefs on the temples we can find and which are linked to Cambodian culture. However, I would be very skeptical in looking at establishing Cambodia as a sports series and destination for basketball, soccer, or something that is not really coming from the country. Yes, so uh, as she said, that it's also a recognition to know that that uh, Simri province can be a place for the sport tourism, but how can we make the sport tourism <coughs> an ideal thing for the Simri uh, province? So how can we do that? Well, first of all, what a lot of tourists reported was that obviously weather and climate, right, might be one limiting factor to certain sports activities, given the high temperatures um, in, in, throughout the year, actually. Um, so linking sports tourism to the temples, as I said, is one powerful thing in a way that we should look at what is in the temples, in the reliefs, and I've been doing that with, with tour guides and, and colleagues to say there's archery in there, right? There's rowing in there. Uh, so a lot of things that are culturally linked to Cambodia which can be explored by adding maybe those activities to tourist tours and say, well, in the morning, let's visit the temples. In the afternoon, let's do some sports activity, right? So this is some, something where maybe um, tourists can be encouraged to engage into some sports. At the same time, um, running competitions in those areas, right? Could also help Cambodia to establish itself more as a sports destination um, on a larger scale, right? But then again, in areas that are linked to the culture and not suddenly doing some ice skating uh, which is not necessarily coming from here, yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, that there, there have been a few sports that have been done in, uh, in the Angkor land, but uh, do you think that we should maintain or develop the existing sport that can be done in this land, or we should explore more sports that we want to do uh, in the same province as well, sir? Well, certainly using what is already there and developing it further is a good starting point, right? Uh, you would not need to reinvent everything from the beginning, but see how that goes. And as you progress to develop existing sports activities further, you can add additional ones, right? But to create an initial buzz, you would certainly need to use what is already there. Volleyball is another aspect, right, that is quite uh, interesting here. So using what is already there and also using it for destination promotion and profile building, right? People would certainly not associate Cambodia with Khmer archery. So this is also some, again, potential because it is more of an, um, how shall I say, more of an unexpected sports, right, that has the potential to surprise. And anything that surprises, has the potential to make people want to come here, explore it and see it themselves. I see. Uh, one, one more thing, sir. Uh, many people, run, they might come from a different parts of <coughs> the world. They might uh, get to know uh, Cambodia through, uh, through uh, different aspects and especially they might get to know Simbia province uh, through the temple mm -hmm. or culture or some classical dances like Apsara, uh, etc. So, but uh, how can Simrip link those people together to understand one thing about uh, the same thing about the Cambodian cultures and how do you think they differentiate their understanding based on their uh, different cultures that they have experienced or the, the, uh, somewhere that they come from originally? So certainly looking at the different uh, target groups, right? We have different interests. Most of the tourists, however, if not all, come here to visit the temples, right? So this is the main point uh, where all the tourists are coming together. However, looking at 
The properties inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List, in total, there are four properties. Besides Angkor, there's Koh Kher, Previ here, and then uh, Sambal Prey Kok, right? Mm -hmm. Most people, however, just come to Angkor. There is the possibility of linking Angkor with maybe Koh Kher, because it's close, um, and then Previ here for those who would like to go a bit further, and even combine it with Sambal Prey Kok for those going to or coming from Phnom Penh. Right? So there are additional possibilities to link it. Um, we have seven sites on the tentative list actually currently. Um, and in the study that we conducted, we also checked about the most visited places besides Siem Reap. And we came to the conclusion that Siem Reap, including the Ton Le Sab Lake, floating villages, are number one spot, followed by Phnom Penh, then Batambong and Kampot. And only then come the island and uh, the beaches, right? I think Siem Reap here, has a very important role in helping tourists understand about Cambodia because everyone is coming to Siem Reap, right? So how can Siem Reap actually function as a multiplier for other provinces uh, to bring here products from other provinces that help tourists see about the diversity of the country? So there's this one province, one product uh, initiative as well, right? Which could be um, further developed and help to showcase what Cambodia has to offer for those staying in Siem Reap. At the same time, that would motivate people to maybe travel into other provinces. As well, when promoting the destination, I would suggest that more remote provinces and lesser known provinces are being used in order to be showcased, right? Advertising Cambodia with the temples is nothing that really surprises tourists because everyone is kind of, you know, aware of the temples and coming to Siem Reap, tourists do expect to see the temples. But what tourists do not expect to see are dolphins in Cambodia, right? Are mountain ranges in Cambodia, are islands, in fact, as I said, with the plankton that is, you know, um, illuminated if you move your hand in the dark water. So those are things that can surprise people, that can make people excited, uh, that want to come here to experience it. So, uh, as you said earlier, that uh, just simply province alone can, uh, cause, or can make the tourists want to go to other tourist, uh, tourism destinations. But uh, as you see that they have a plan, like mm -hmm. the duration or the budget plan, and the knowledge of uh, Siem Reap or Cambodia is uh, also, uh, it also depends on the individual and uh, the parts of the world that they come from. So in this aspect, uh, uh, what, what is your recommendation for them on both the duration and uh, the budget? And uh, especially in this sense, uh, how much can they know about the Siem Reap province alone? and the Cambodia as a whole during their stay, considering that uh, they might know a little, a little about uh, the country or they might know nothing about the country, but they come here uh, through uh, various uh, factors, something like that. So certainly Siem Reap can serve as a gateway into Cambodia, right? Why? Because everyone is coming to Siem Reap to see the Angkor temples. And f starting from Siem Reap, tourists can then go to other places. However, adding to what we said earlier, those other places need to be accessible, right? Need to have reliable transportation. That reliable transportation needs to be affordable. It needs to be safe. It needs to be clean, right? So a lot of aspects that I would need to consider if I wanted to get people uh, out of Siem Reap. Looking at the length of stay, we found that in 2023, uh, 2022, excuse me, tourists would stay between three to five nights, um, with three nights being most common. And in 2023, we saw a very small decline in the length of stay, with the length of stay being mostly between two to four nights. Still with three being most common, but a little less than the year before. Why? Because in 2022, there were still a couple of countries that were closed, where tourists had to rearrange their travel plans, and then decided to maybe stay a bit longer in Cambodia, rather than going to some other place. However, last year, 2023, when all countries had reopened, um, the length of stay 
went down a bit, given that tourists could again travel to other places and maybe reduce their time in Cambodia. Unfortunately, right? Because as, as I said, there are so many things to visit and see in Cambodia. So tourists should definitely stay between seven to 10 days, yeah? If they really wanted to explore the whole of Cambodia. Why? Because the current length of stay we see, with three nights being most common, refers to tourists coming to Cambodia just for the temples, right? If we add another one or two days in Batambang, another one or two days in Phnom Penh, yeah, very easily you have reached the seven days already that I mentioned, plus maybe three days at the beachside or on the island is the 10 days that I said, right? So if really you want to get a good impression and a good, uh, let's say, overview of Cambodia, then seven to 10 days. And this is still what I would call overview, right? If really you wanted to go into deeper uh, uh, insights, then we talk about 14 days plus. But that's true for every country, I guess, right? Um, but in particular, three days for Cambodia is not enough. <laughs> so uh, from uh, between uh, throughout the seven days to 10 days, uh, how much do you think tourists, especially uh, foreigners, can learn about the culture and experience uh, the uh, cultural uh, activities in Cambodia. So, uh, let's say from the Simri province and then they might extend their stay to the Battambang or Phnom Penh or to uh, Sen Uvil. So. Well, looking at the areas that I mentioned earlier in terms of what do tourists find most attractive, culture, history, nature, outdoors and adventure, right, gastronomy, those are areas that I would need to explore and make tourists excited about those areas and give them a good overview in different places, right? And I should not only do a 7 to 10 days tour about culture or a 7 to 10 days uh, tour about history, it's about the diversity of the tour. It's about different impressions that tourists can gain while visiting Cambodia, which means that Siem Reap certainly is very well known for culture, right? Um, then I can have Batambong with art, with architecture, with adventure, right? Um, Batambong, which used to be the art capital of, of Cambodia back in the days, I can make it more linked to art again. I can build a clear profile of Batambong for art, for architecture, for artistic um, things like the fair circus, right, in, in Batambong as well. Um, then culinary, along the road, right, I could bring down the transfer times between places by making tourists discover culinary treats of Cambodia along the way. The sticky rice and the bamboo, for example fried spiders if you want, right? Or whatever Cambodia has to offer. But I can make the transfer times between points of interest exciting in a way that tourists don't feel like, oh, this is a four hour transfer because we, we're going to stop on the way at least two times. Phnom Penh then linked to history, certainly, sad history, right? Which is also part of the country and which very clearly is another area of interest that tourists want to understand about, want to learn about. Um, and when we talk about that history, this is also where um, memorials, you know, should be guiding tourists in a comprehensive way, maybe in a more comprehensive way than they actually do today. And this is something where tourists are very interested in. Um, and then Kampot with the pepper, right, countryside, until you reach the beaches. So. Looking at the areas we discovered, why not make a tour that includes all of them? And again, it's about the diversity, and it's the diversity that is making the tourists excited. So I think um, besides coming to uh, Simbri province to experience all the adventures, uh, activities in around the temples or the uh, community-led uh, activities they can expand <coughs> their expectations to see other diversity at the other province as well. But uh, in Simbri a province alone, so do you think that uh, one week or seven days to uh, ten days are enough for them to explore what is there about Simbri for them to explore? So, or, or is it too long or is it too short? You can also stay seven to ten days. You can even stay 14 days, right? I'm just trying to um, include a bit the, the perspective of the tourists to say 
for most of them, Cambodia is very far away, right? So when they travel that far away, they would want to see more things at the same time. Most people have limited amount of vacation as well. So there's this, let's say, trade-off between I'm traveling very far and I want to see as much as I can, right? Um, maybe not in a way like I need to fill my day from morning to evening every day, right? But more like, okay, if I am in Cambodia and I'm staying here seven to 10 days, I would want to see more than just one province. That's a bit the thought that, at least from a Western perspective, travelers might have. So that's why as much as I would want to you know, have people stay longer, I believe that we need to share the benefits of tourism across provinces. And Siem Reap is already blessed with the Angkor temples and is the main province of touristic interest. And I think we should be using Siem Reap as a gateway into other provinces. Although, of course, people could, you know, spend seven to ten days in this province only, for sure. <laughs> yes, uh, so, uh, you know, people come from uh, different places and <coughs> have uh, different cultures. But uh, in, in Siem Reap uh, province, uh, do you think uh, what does this province have to convince people that uh, people all around the world can have uh, a place in this province like uh, to heal or to relax uh, emotionally, spiritually and uh, physically as we uh, have a, a sport tourism as well. So. Yeah, I think Cambodia is, is very unique in a lot of aspects and what tourists should really get when they are here is a sense of place, right? And how do they get that sense of place? by having an emotional connection or finding an emotional and spiritual connection to Siem Reap, to Cambodia. When we ran our studies 2022 and 2023, we compared the image of Cambodia before traveling and after arrival. And we found that a lot of images that tourists had before they came actually did not reflect the image that they left with, which means that the image of Cambodia completely turned almost in a way that they left with different images in mind as compared to the ones they had when they came. And number one, in both years, images when tourists left or which when, when tourists basically had arrived, so image after arrival, were people, locals and the local lifestyle, right? So the Cambodian people is really what is making the destination unique. And this is what has a great potential to actually make tourists really get a good sense of the place, to connect on a personal level, to connect on an emotional level. Um, also to find a spiritual connection for inner development, right? A lot of tourists come from stressed daily lives, from stressed routines, right? From uh, countries where there is a lot of busy things um, and Cambodia really has the potential to let people calm down, to let people relax, to let people get close to nature as well. Um, there's a syndrome called nature deficiency syndrome, which means that people are not exposed sufficiently to nature anymore, living in very big urban contexts where they maybe see only very little of green or don't go out to nature, right? Um, and this is where Cambodia has the unique possibility to capitalize on, given the current level of development, to say, well, um, we have a lot of untouched nature and this untouched nature is going to be a major touristic asset besides the temples. However, if I want to capitalize on that asset, I will need to protect it. Right? So protection of the environment is very, very crucial if I want to use my nature to promote it to tourists. Right? Um, looking at deforestation, which is happening, right, might put those natural resources in danger. So we need to protect those natural resources if we want to market it. There's one country, uh, which is Costa Rica in Latin America, which has done an amazing job in protecting their natural resources and really establishing itself as a destination known for nature, for 
hiking, for activities, for ecotourism. And I believe Cambodia can be doing the same, right? Using the temples as the way in and then using the nature to actually expose stressed tourists to find peace, inner connection and spiritual um, development by connecting with nature but also with the locals. Yes, sir. so we have talked a lot about the convenience of uh, transportation, accommodation and uh, duration and the budget but uh, there's one more important factor during traveling is uh, the sense of safety. So yep. As you can see that uh, in Simdu province uh, the main city might be crowded and uh, we can uh, assure the safety and the security but uh, there are more than just a city here. The, the temple, the small path along the way that are uh, <coughs> covered by the green forest and the untouched nature as you mentioned. So uh, is, uh, kind, uh, is uh, this kind of uh, traveling safe uh, for uh, the uh, international visitors and let's say especially those who come here do uh, doing uh, solo traveling so is this an ideal uh, place for them? Definitely Cambodia is safe Cambodia is safe for traveling um, however the perception of that safety is different if we compare the perception of safety before arrival to after arrival what does it mean? When we checked for the perceived safety before arrival, we actually found that um, almost 60% classified Cambodia as rather safe, with around 20% to say rather not safe before arrival. Why? Because there are a couple of reviews online that share stories, especially about land border immigration, that is making people feel a bit unsafe, right? So aspects like, you know, paying different amounts for the visa, um, paying some extra money here and there, is something that is scaring off tourists, especially coming from a Western context. Um, Cambodia is very safe, say 80% after arrival, because this is when they experience it themselves, right? And 20% would say rather safe. However, less than 1% after arrival would say Cambodia is rather not safe. So we have a huge shift of those saying it's rather safe before arrival, they would say it's very safe. And the ones saying it's rather not safe, they would then say it's rather safe, right? So everyone basically feels safer once they arrive. But the perception of safety is very crucial if we look at the point in time where the travel decision is made and this is before people come to the country right so we need to share with potential tourists that Cambodia is safe well before they arrive why because when they research different destinations they are not only looking at Cambodia they're also looking at Thailand at Vietnam maybe even destinations in Latin America right and this is where Cambodia needs to send out a very clear message to say Cambodia is safe right so that people can book with a good feeling. However, uh, we realized that for solo travelers, there's a difference in gender with female solo travelers feeling rather safe than very safe. But this is maybe something that uh, is due to the fact of solo travelers. Uh, again, still it's very safe, right? But we need to get that message out. Uh, we need to make sure that people who are thinking at traveling to Cambodia will have a good feeling when they decide to come here. What we found out last year, more than the year before I must say, is that tourists reported different perceptions of safety comparing Siem Reap to Phnom Penh. So Phnom Penh started to have more of a rather not safe perception as compared to Siem Reap and this is something where uh, we need to work on. Why? Because on the one hand we try to get tourists out of Siem Reap we want them to see other places. If those other places include Phnom Penh, we need to make sure that tourists do also feel safe in Phnom Penh. Because what we don't want to have is the perception that only Siem Reap is safe. And when I leave Siem Reap, it might be less safe. This is not true, but this is a perception that might come if I don't work on that, right? So safety is very important. First, to communicate when people decide to travel to Cambodia. Second, also to ensure in the years to come that 
in all the places in Cambodia it is in fact safe and uh, Phnom Penh, from what we learned, has a perception that it might be a bit less safe than Siem Reap, right? So, uh, yes, sir, thank you so much. Uh, but we, we are reaching the last question here and this is might be unexpected. But uh, you said at the beginning of the interview about the improvement and the good and the positive progress of our tourism uh, recovery. But uh, we want to talk about the uh, lacking parts, the, uh, uh, the room to improve and uh, the uh, challenges that Simriap is facing to uh, recover the uh, tourism sector to its fullest. Uh, so what, what is your view on this? My view on this is that we need to let more people know about Siem Reap and Cambodia, right? And I'm often being asked, is it a matter of lack of attractions, lack of activities? And it's not. There are enough attractions, there are enough activities. It's a matter of promoting existing attractions and existing activities to the outside world. If people don't know there is Siem Reap, if people don't know there are beaches in Cambodia, if people don't know about Cambodia as a travel destination, they will not come, right? So it's not a matter of creating additional activities, like an aquarium, which is maybe not endemic to Cambodia either, but that's a different thing, yeah? Um, people need to know about Cambodia. People need to know what they can do here. And if I don't change that from a national destination marketing perspective, things here locally will not change. Right? And very often Cambodia is looking at the neighbors, Thailand and Vietnam. So what are they doing differently? They are just more well known than is Cambodia. They have their own airlines. They have very good destination promotion. They are very active in a lot of different countries, on a lot of fairs, on a lot of exhibitions. Right? So if we look at ITB Berlin, Thailand almost has half of the whole right because they join forces they have a concerted effort in promoting the destination together and once again it's not a matter of having enough to do here i can easily spend one month and i can do a different thing every day but i need to know about cambodia otherwise i won't come but, uh, from from your observations uh, what has to be done in order to you know uh, spread it further to the outside world other than just uh, neighboring countries or the uh, ASEAN region but into uh, the western and the other regions as well so what has to be done what 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 does Cambodia has to do in order to uh, spread it further well very often um, I'm being asked how can we promote Cambodia with limited budget right so that's also one one concern that responsible uh, bodies are having and it's not about uh, budget only it's a matter of ideas it's a matter of creativity we have seen many many great marketing campaigns that were run with very limited budget and that were extremely successful whether that is um, a very small swiss town for example that no one knew before they took 10,000 uh, swiss francs and turned it into a marketing a value of multiple millions just by having a great idea um, using Facebook and social media as, as a vehicle. We have Finland, right, which run the campaign um, to, about happiness, making people be excited about happiness, come to Finland to experience it themselves. Cambodia can do something similar like that to make people understand about what happiness means for Cambodians, how to find your inner uh, uh, calm your inner peace how to develop internally through such a marketing campaign so it's a matter of ideas it's a matter of concerted effort uh, however guided under the responsible uh, bodies that can then give the direction and we have the Cambodia tourism board that was recently formed so I'm very confident that this is a very important first step into creating such destination marketing campaigns that will then help the outside world know more about Cambodia. So uh, I, th I think this is all. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Mr. Nicholas, much. <laughs> for sharing your uh, insights on uh, the tourism, sec uh, tourism sector. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the end of uh, the interview about uh, the tourism sector and the progress we have talked 
uh, a lot about uh, the reasons, uh, the advantages and also the benefits of uh, visiting uh, Simria province that is, uh, as Mr. Nicholas said, can be the gateway to uh, the other tourism destinations in Cambodia. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, uh, being here with us from the beginning until the end.